Hi, my name is Charlie Turcott, and I represent the Dale Prentice Company from West Michigan. You're currently in my home office in Grand Rapids. Today, I'm going to introduce overpressure protection. It's going to be a 30,000 foot view of the subject. The Dale Prentice Company is a Michigan based process safety and automation firm that was founded in Detroit in 1926. We also own and operate an industrial valve service company called BRC Protex that has a footprint across the Midwest and Rocky Mountain. We're gonna go through some of the common definitions and design parameters that are used, the history, common devices, and then codes and standards. A pressure relief device is a device designed to prevent pressure or vacuum from exceeding a predetermined value in a vessel by transferring fluid. Set pressure is the pressure that the device opens. Opening characteristics vary depending on the device and the manufacturer. Accumulation is the amount of pressure that builds in the vessel while the device is open, so after you've reached your set pressure. Capacity is the amount of fluid that flows per unit of time through the device. And back pressure is the amount of pressure that exists at the outlet of the device. So how is the field developed? In the late 20th century, industrial boilers were very common. They were used to power steamboats, they were used at factories, but they weren't well regulated. And because of that, a lot of people were injured or killed in pressure vessel explosions. Materials weren't standardized. Safety just wasn't understood like it is today. Actually, one of the largest disasters in U.S. history um, was a boiler explosion on a steamboat that was carrying prisoners of war from the south back to the north. Today, there's three major categories of devices that are used to protect vessels, rupture disks, relief valves, and pressure vacuum vents. So rupture disks are a non-reclosing device. Once they're open, they're, uh, you have to replace them. Relief valves are what you're gonna see at the top of a boiler, and pressure vacuum vents are used most often on storage tanks when the set pressure is below 15 pounds gauge. And we'll talk about why uh, the line is drawn at 15 pounds. On an oil rig or uh, elsewhere in the oil and gas industry, you might see a HIP system, which instead of using traditional pressure relief equipment, uses automated valves to isolate downstream equipment from an upstream pressure source. So on an oil rig, uh, instead of installing a complicated pressure relief system for handling the fluid once it leaves the pressure relief device, um, it's more cost effective to install a small hips skid that's going to isolate equipment that can't handle the pressure from the pressure source. These systems have to be redundant uh, because they do rely on automation equipment, so they're a little bit more complicated than your traditional uh, mechanical relief valve. Most important code is written by ASME, and ASME was founded in 1880 as a result of a lot of these industrial disasters that were becoming common. So ASME formed, and then in 1915, they came out with the first edition of the Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code. Uh, and that document is still used today. Obviously, it's been updated quite a few times, including in the 1950s and 60s when they added the rules for nuclear pressure vessels. ASME only governs vessels with an MAWP of 15 pounds gauge or more. So we'll talk about how industry fills in the gaps uh, for vessels and devices below that pressure. ASME, they write the rules, but they don't do the field work. Uh, they've designated the National Board of Boiler and Pressure Vessel Inspectors to inspect devices and vessels like boilers. And if you are an operator or owner of an industrial boiler, you're probably familiar with your boiler inspector. In the US, API is the most important body outside of ASME when it comes to the design, testing, and repair of pressure relief devices. Uh, one of the most commonly referred to API codes is API 526, which standardizes not only the orifice, but also the dimensions of pressure relief valves. ISO is more commonly used in Europe, but a lot of the content is the same. Uh, they give examples of how to size based on different scenarios in industry. API is important because they also have best practices and design guidance for devices below 15 pounds gauge. So if you were designing equipment for a tank farm 
API is going to be the best source of knowledge. Apprentice Company is a trusted partner for industries throughout Michigan and the Midwest. If you or your team would benefit from online training, including sizing and design of pressure relief devices or common issues related to pressure relief reliability, we'd be happy to organize one or as we build our library, you can view some of our trainings online. If you'd like to contact us, please do at sales at .com, or you can call our main office 248-399-5500. Thanks, everyone.